black people. I can say black people. Um, the battle is not to the strong or something like that. Right, the race is not to the strong. Yeah, but they that endure to the end shall be saved. They take an Old Testament verse and a New Testament verse, put them together and make a song, and people think that that's what the Word of God says. No. It says chance happens to them all. And Jesus says, and they that endure until the end shall be saved. So a lot of songs are corrupting people's faith. And a lot of songs are encouraging their faith. But you need to know from faith what's it doing. So the reason why I'm saying it is because Abraham, Abram starts out with the blessing. But he has to be tested. And many of us don't recognize that we go through tests every day to keep us from being selfish. Amen. This is not a service about me, but I, I was short and fat. How did I get that way? I was greedy. Feeding eight kids and you don't feel as if you get enough, you're going to go for more. Many believers don't think God is treating them fairly. So that's why they hoard. And they're, and they're afraid to sow. If you ever notice, like the, the and I'm not saying this if you're poor, you know, don't get mad at me. Jesus said the poor you will have what you always. But many times the most, the most, what do you call it? What's the word? The most prosperous people in a church are the givers. Amen. Even in the world. The richest people are philanthropists. Yes. <laughs> and they got there by giving. Come on. You know, and the Bible says that as he that gives and has more and as he that withholds and doesn't have enough. For God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. You see, so if you have a problem with what you're receiving from God, don't blame him. Amen. Check your giving. Amen. You're married and your spouse won't kiss you. Maybe give teeth a wash. <laughs> Say so. <laughs> now, I got to get out of here. Now, the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now, this is his first time talking to Abram. Verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. That's the blessing of Abraham. I will bless you so that you can be a blessing. Right? And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham stayed there and said, I'm waiting on God to come get me up out of this place. Ha, the Lord said he'll visit me. Ha, ha, I'm just going to sit here and wait on the Lord. <laughs> now the Lord said, get up out of there and I'm going to bless you. Yes. Abraham said, ha, mm. I'm waiting on the wind. <laughs> I'm waiting for a word from Methuselah, because I know Methuselah been spending time with the Lord. Hallelujah. No, it says, and Abram departed, yes, Lord. as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Yeah. See, the moment God told Abram, get out of here, I'm going to bless you, Abram said, hey, I'm out of here. Yeah. You got to remember, up until that point, God had no people. Abram was a moon worshiper. Everybody worshiped whatever they wanted. Rocks, moons, stars, suns, you know, whatever. And God said, I want a people in the earth. <laughs> so you have to see this. When God decides to make you his people, he'll talk to you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, help me. Vincent, you remember when you wanted to make her your people? <laughs> <laughs> he went up to Lisa and said, you about to be my people. And Lisa said, well, we got to go talk to my pastor. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, he, he good people. And, he, and she said, we people. <laughs> when God calls you, he don't send you to church. <laughs> he calls you. You might meet him in church, <laughs> but he doesn't expect you to meet him only at church. Yes, come on. He said, I'll meet you in church, but take me home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. 
I'm a, so I gave him three dollars. Anybody else want three dollars? I'll get more claps. <laughs> all right. Angel, that's five dollars. All right, eight dollars. All right. Wow, ten dollars for this lady over here. I gotta keep it going. So you see, when God spoke to him, he obeyed. And he went. He left his family. Many of us are in sinful relationships and God says, get out of them. And we'd be like, well, the Lord's going to move. The Lord's going to move. He did move. He left you. Amen. He said, get out of them and you'll find out where I'm at. All the amens went down. <laughs> you know, one, one thing I like about the Bible is it has a story for every occasion. There was a time when the children of Israel were not on good terms with God, and God sent a prophet to say, you got to get rid of your wives and your kids because they don't belong to God. You know what they said? Later, <laughs> they got rid of their wives and their kids, and they went back to God. Wow. Yeah, it's a while. See, you, you want to keep what God didn't give you. He didn't give you poverty. He didn't give you sickness. He didn't give you disease. But you want to say, oh, you know, this is how it is. No, it's not how it is. Now, I'm not trying to say God can't work out a, a difficult situation. He can. But if he tells you it's time to move, it's time to move. Yes. Amen. Now, go real quick. Chapter 14. Am I in Genesis 14 somewhere? Now, anybody ever heard of the term tithing? Now, a tithe is a choice that people with provision that God provided for, they give God a portion saying thank you. It's not a rule. It's not a, it's not a, a, a requirement from the church. It's a privilege yes. that Abraham instituted because he obeyed God. Amen. Well, you know, churches have adopted it, you know, but the whole premise is it started from a relationship with a man that believed God yes. and obeyed God. Yes. You know, anybody here ever been engaged? Can I bother you one last time? I'm going to get in trouble. No, you don't have to get out. My wife. Before she was my wife, she was sister. We were sister Lena, right? And I remember I said, I got to get her an engagement ring. You remember that? Uh -huh. I ain't had no money. <laughs> and I wasn't going to be playing like those people say, well, I'm going to get you this ring now and get you one later. I ain't got no later. I'm too old for now, ladies. Because <laughs> she would have said, oh, this is nice. No, she would not say, no, it's, it's nice. Man, she, I got me, I got her this ring. She saw this ring. She, 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 it was nice, right? Yeah. And I got four roses, right? And one was fake. And inside the fake one was this ring that I had to get. You know what she said? I got my ring! <laughs> she didn't even say, yes. <laughs> she didn't even say, I'll marry you. She said, I got my ring! <laughs> I had to follow her around. I said, you, 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 you going to marry me? Or you just want the ring? But the reason why I'm saying that is because the engagement ring is not, it's not something that she made up. It was a tradition that a duke started. He couldn't marry her at that moment, so he said, here, take this ring as a promise that I'm coming back. All right. Okay. All right. See, so Abram, here he is. He loves, you know, he, he's, a, he's a servant of God. God never asked him for money. He said, here, take a tithe. Yeah. And God said, say what? <laughs> Come on, let's look at it. See, so you have to look at it. When you're a tither, you get entitled to more. Yeah. Because you recognize you're not doing it out of religious service. You're doing it out of relationship. Yes. Even though, in the, even, 
Okay. <laughs> Even though God allowed it to be instituted in the law, it started from a relationship. And Abraham was never under a law. Amen. Now look at this. Genesis 14, 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thy hands, and he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto him, Give me the persons, and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said unto the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoelace, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abram rich. Now this king, you gotta remember it was a war. Remember they, they kidnapped Abram's son, nephew Lot. Abram went with his armed men, took Lot back, Melchizedek just came with bread and wine. And Abram blessed him. And Melchizedek said, well, in blessing, I'm going to bless you. He said, God's going to bless you. You bless me, I'm, God's going to bless you. So you see, when you desire to allow God to go beyond your giving, give what he asks for. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. And tithe with purpose. I mean, you can always give offerings, but tithe out of a relationship. Yes. Not because the preacher, you know, he got to pay his car note. Oh, yeah. ah, I see God moving on you. Mm. Uh -huh. Tithe because it's a relationship between you and God and that you don't want your money to control you. Whatever you can't get rid of controls you. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I remember when I, when I moved and I couldn't shake, I was saved and I couldn't shake R&B. I couldn't shake rap music. I had all these albums and CDs and I was supposed to throw them away. I couldn't do it. I left them in the house and I moved out. Because they were a part of me, I couldn't depart. Come on, help me. Whatever you, can't get, whatever you can't release, it's a part of you. You know, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. It's the love of it. If you can't depart with what doesn't belong to you, you're going to be in trouble. It's time to pay your mortgage and you're looking at, no, it's my money. You find yourself on the street with $40,000 in your pocket. You got my money. But you got to learn that you know money is a tool. You ever have a hammer in a nail? What are you going to do with the hammer? Hug it? <laughs> Pick that tool up and use it. Nail that thing in. Take that money and nail that problem. Yeah. Nail that debt. Yes. Buy a new hair or whatever you got to buy. <laughs> <laughs> buy a new outfit, something. Nail that thing. Use that money. <laughs> buy that food. Yeah. Buy a real Bible. How yes. I many you ever go in churches with all these Gideon Bibles? Where you stole that from? <laughs> Me stealing Bibles out of a hotel. Thou shalt not steal. <laughs> Just because it's a Bible don't mean that it don't go under the rule. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just laying there because the next person that was coming needed to read it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Make sure you get a leather Bible, one that lasts. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. I was in this store, in, you know, the sneaker store. Man, they got sneakers for $125. Them kids can't even play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you scrub. That's how I feel about Christians that have bummy Bibles. You don't even read it. At least buy a leather one. You can show off. It's <laughs> a nice Bible. Amen. I got to close. So you see, he told Abram, and Abram did what? Abram departed. I'm out of time. Can I just, can I just quote it? Y'all can do it when you go home. Genesis, in Genesis 15, after this time when Abram tithed, Abram is now, you know, thinking. He's thinking on some things. Ever, anybody ever think? Amen. And so 
in a vision, God appears to him, because Abram says like this, what you gonna give me? Seeing I don't have any kids. See, there's a time when you do talk to God. Abram said, what are you going to give me seeing I don't have any children? And God told him, I need, we need to look at it. Genesis 15. Sorry. Well, oh, I'm almost done. Those of you that got to leave, I'm almost done. Verse 1, Genesis 15, 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, say in a vision. Now, you see, God can speak to you by, by scripture, by dreams, by vision, by revelation, by word of knowledge. You, there's different ways God can speak to you, but I would suggest if you have a vision bring it to a testing center <laughs> you know because many times you know you know that food can give you visions <laughs> right you eat late at night you have a horrible nightmare and you think oh the devil attacked me no it was so it was sausage <laughs> sausage attacked you because, you see, um, anybody ever heard of biology? Yes. Your stomach is right where your soul is. Your soul is right here in the middle of your body. So when you jack it up with certain kind of foods, you know, your soul can't hear right. You ever notice how men get fat? Watching TV and drinking beer. Right? Because they're, they're, they're feeding their eyes and then they're throwing the beer down on the soul. And so it just expands. <laughs> and all they want is another six pack. <laughs> they don't want a can. They need a six pack because they have expanded. <laughs> and then they go, err. That's the sign. So you, may, you may think it's funny, but you see, the, the key is, you know, your spirit is in your stomach. And that's why fasting helps you. <laughs> The first time you fast, you're going to feel like you want to kill somebody. <laughs> no food, no water. <sighs> but after three days, you'll be like, hey, I'm dying anyhow. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. It's all good. That's why you fast. You don't fast to be religious. You fast to kill that animal down there. How many ever heard the term, a way to a man's heart is through his stomach? Yeah. Yeah, caught that, he's a beast without food. Yeah. I've had my moments. <laughs> I was in a car, right? Any, any husbands here tell the truth, or even men? I was in a car, minding my business, my wife all happy, her and her friend, they driving, going up to Woodbury Commons to go shopping. She looked in the rearview mirror, and here I am like this. <laughs> She go just like this. You see Wendy's. <laughs> she look back in the mirror, mirror. <laughs> Cause she gonna punish me shopping. <laughs> I'm not going on an empty stomach. <laughs> but that food saved me. <laughs> I was acting safe. <laughs> she came. Come on. <laughs> Think about it. You know, you're a young woman, you want to get married, and you can't cook. Who going to marry you? <laughs> They'll have sex with you, but they ain't marrying you because they can't eat that. They want food. <laughs> Men are human. More human than women. I got to get out of here. Where am I at? Okay, and after these things, the Lord's... The word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I'm thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Abram said, Lord, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless in the student of my house? Is this Eliezer of Damascus? And behold, excuse me, and Abram said, Behold, lo, I mean, behold, to me thou hast given me no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thy he that come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So so shall thy seed be. Now, here is a scenario. And this is true. Can you imagine you got people living in your house that ain't related to you? You know if you die, all your stuff is theirs. <laughs> so Abram like, yo, God, 
You know, I know you love me and everything, but what you gonna give me? This dude ain't my kid. This ain't my son. He's gonna get all my stuff. Mm-hmm. And God had promised him that he's gonna be a blessing and his seed will be a blessing. He said, it's not my seed. And God said, all right, go outside. If you can count the stars, that's how many children you're gonna have. Yeah. And the next verse is what's important. And it says this in verse five, I mean verse six, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Yeah. He showed him stars. And Abram said, I, all right, I believe you. And God said right then, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. The moment you and I believe that Jesus died for your sins and that God raised him from the dead, at that moment, God counts you righteous. It's not jumping through hula hoops, wearing all black, wearing all white, going to church every Sunday. No, dotting your eyes, crossing your T's. No, Abraham, all Abraham did was believe God. And, and, the, and the nation of Israel has been benefiting from that blessing ever since. And so has the Christian world. Amen. All right. I'm really closing. Amen's could have been much better than that. <laughs>